January 30th, in response to a bill signed into law by the Governor of New York, the United States Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops issued a balanced and sensitive statement on the sanctity of life. Our holy hierarchs are encouraging us to pursue, as much as we are able, a culture of life. They acknowledged that there could, of course, be rare medical conditions that would endanger the life of a mother in the third trimester, but they ask that we be as careful as possible about these matters. Previous to the law just mentioned, the state of New York granted significant legal protections to pregnant women, as well as to preborn children after the 24th week of gestation. First, such children could not be aborted unless the life of the mother was in danger. Second, a person who purposely struck a heavily pregnant woman in the stomach in order to cause a miscarriage was liable for the felony of attempted abortion. Third, a person who murdered a woman who was more than six months pregnant was liable for the crime of double homicide. Finally, the previous law in the state of New York had required that board-certified physicians be the ones to perform any abortions, so that medical complications could be dealt with if not avoided entirely. It also implied that children who survived an abortion procedure would be treated the same as any living child should. Legal experts are saying that the New York law just passed was designed to remove all of these protections. Not only children, but also women, and in particular, pregnant women, are placed in serious danger by such a law. Moreover, the New York law allows women to abort a baby after six months if the fetus is not judged to be viable. Because viability is not defined in the statute, we are to understand that disabled as well as Down syndrome children can be labeled as non-viable. In the nation of Iceland, a liberal democracy like ours, 100% of children with Down syndrome are frequently identified and aborted in the womb. In the U.S. nationwide, the annual rate has risen to almost 70%. This use of abortion for eugenics purposes means that abortion as an issue is no longer completely reducible to the simple Anglo-American ideal of countering state coercion by securing the rights of the individual. Whatever the law decides about the advisability or possibility of regulating abortion, we can at least discuss the morality of what is happening. For example, abortion has also long been allied with racism, as the vast majority of abortion clinics are centered in African-American neighborhoods. Can we Greek Orthodox celebrate Archbishop Yakovos' march with Martin Luther King on Monday, and then ignore the racial aspect of American abortion on Tuesday? Abortionists nationwide are also thought to be the un witting accomplices to the rape or statutory rape of young women. For when girls as young as 13 are entering an abortion facility, their sexual partners are often over, sometimes well over the age of 18, and abortion is a way to destroy the evidence of their abuse. Abortion, of course, is also a global issue. Shockingly, in more than a dozen countries, abortion very often takes the form of sex-selective abortion or SSA. In India, China, Pakistan, South Korea, and several other countries, families so much prefer sons over daughters that girl babies are routinely eliminated in the womb. The Economist, hardly a religious magazine, estimates that between 125 and 200 million girls and women have now been lost in this way worldwide. This decimation of the female sex through sex-selective abortion is easily the greatest single moral issue of our day. And yet from our political leaders, exactly nothing is said or done about it. 2,000 years ago, the Orthodox Christian Church was born in a similar environment. According to the academician Rodney Stark, so many Roman families at the time of Christ committed infanticide against their baby girls that the Roman Empire faced a great shortage of women. Frequently, these son-preferring Roman families later demanded that the Christians supply them with wives. Every Sunday morning at Matins, we remember several women from the early church who, in the context of widespread Roman female infanticide and the consequent shortage of women, refused to enter into loveless marriages with pagan men. As punishment, 
They were then martyred for their faith. Saints Barbara, Anastasia, Catherine, Kiriaki, Fotini, Marina, Paraskevi, and Irene, as well as many other early Christian women, gave their lives for Christ in exactly the same circumstances that we face today. How can we honor their memories or even bear their names, and yet have nothing to say about the horrific destruction of female life that sex-selective abortion has made possible and even routine? Orthodox Christians have always spoken out and legislated to prevent such practices from becoming not only legal, not only normal, but in fact socially expected. Whether we are voters, political donors, or politicians, we must do everything that can be done legally and within the context we face to advance the culture of life. Certainly no law about abortion can capture every medical nuance or personal difficulty, but it seems to many that the recent New York law doesn't even try. Scientifically speaking, a new human life begins at conception. Scientifically speaking, abortion takes a human life. Anyone can see that the use of abortion for eugenic purposes, or as an expression of misogyny, or for almost any other purpose but to protect the life of the mother, is morally problematic, if not outright wrong. The question is not, therefore, whether religion should intrude into politics, but whether our politicians can sacrifice the ideologies they hold so religiously long enough to act in accord with basic science and basic human dignity. As Orthodox Christians, we do not have to believe that abortion should always be illegal, but we do have to believe that abortion is almost always wrong, and indeed usually a great wrong. And we have an obligation to work through law, public policy, culture, and acts of charity to render abortion as rare as possible for the sake of children, mothers, fathers, and indeed all of us, while also holding out the possibility of forgiveness and reconciliation.